Super excited to be here. Um, thank you all for coming out here with Selena, uh, who's head of a brand for Away Luggage Company. Um, has been a very big year for Away, if you've been following. Um, in May, announced their Series D, $100 million, which brought them to a unicorn valuation of uh, $1.4 billion. So, you know, huge milestones for the company overall. Um, so really excited to kind of dig in to, uh, with Selena here about just where the brand stands today and what lies ahead. Um, so to kind of start with that, you know, the funding and, and just where you are from a valuation perspective, um, with that fresh capital, where do you see that going? And it, like what, as a brand today, where do you see needing to use most of that uh, investment right now? Yeah, to fuel well, your growth. <laughs> yeah, well, firstly, thank you guys so much yep. for having me. And Lauren, I'm so excited to be chatting with you. Um, we've had a really big year at Away. How many people here have an Away suitcase? It's a good question. Okay, yeah. next year, it's a good, more yeah, hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, from the very beginning, we've been a brand that's about travel and not just about luggage. Mm -hmm. So when we think about everything we've done in the last three and a half years, it's been really building that base. It's been building the brand love, the loyalty, and those stories that are really... Um, are really like escalating in the market and really seeing um, people love our products and they love our brand. Mm -hmm. So the new funding um, is really gonna help us fuel that growth mm -hmm. and to be able to reach more customers with more products and in more places. So um, the three pillars of our growth, I think going into the next few years is retail expansion. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking to add 50 stores in the next three years. Um, product expansion, so going into new product categories such as apparel, uh, lifestyle accessories, and into CPG and wellness type products. Um, and then the last is really international expansion. As a global travel brand who's looking to transform travel broadly, um, for us that means being in all places where our travelers go to. Sure. So there's a lot to unpack there, yeah. obviously. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but I want to start with this idea of, because I own away luggage, right? And I feel like, and probably many of us that have a suitcase ourselves, you're walking through the airport and you see somebody else that has that suitcase. And for whatever reason, you know, and it's probably a lot thanks to, you know, your hard work, but like you feel like some instant connection with that other person and you're like, oh, we're, you know, we're on the same wavelength or like we just understand each other as consumers. Um, so how, how do you build that as a brand where there is that like special connection and just loyalty overall that I guess you feel, you know, as an away owner? Yeah, I think one of my, um, one of the moments that I had where I, was, where I was like kind of like shrieking inside was um, someone tweeted that the away nod is the new Jeep wave. Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's like no, exactly it what we're trying to airport, build. In the airport, for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But really for us, it's been a kind of a little bit what we started talking about in the beginning, which is we've never been a luggage brand. We've always been a travel brand. Mm -hmm. And so like unpacking that, like what does that really mean? That means even when the brand was launched, it launched through a book and not through a product. Right. It launched through stories. It launched through a community and not through sales, not through advertising. And for us, that has been a pinnacle of our company um, since the very beginning. So when we're trying to tell stories of why our luggage is, um, is thoughtful, it is made for our travelers, it, is, um, it fosters a sense of community, but for us it's always been about that greater context. It's the stories we tell, it's the way we leverage Here Magazine. Um, really uniquely, I think, for a way um, in kind of the direct-to-consumer businesses is the way we view brand and performance marketing, mm -hmm. which is that we are inextricably linked and that we view ourselves as owning one strategy together. Mm -hmm. And so with that, on the brand side, it's my role is to create brand love. It's to create an emotional connection. And how does that fuse down all the way through performance? Perform like the brand has to come through in our performance assets mm -hmm. as much as anything else. And for that, when people do convert, then they also love the experience that they have afterwards. When they talk to our customer experience team, which actually sits on our brand team, because we're really responsible for that full loop. Sure. And so for us, I guess that's to say like, 
breeding brand love happens at every single part of the customer funnel sure. um, and after purchase and that we've seen um, really reap a ton of, of word of mouth marketing, organic marketing for us that comes back into the business. Well, and while we're on the topic of just kind of brand marketing and whatnot, I wanted to ask you about the different channels that you're using to do this, yeah. you know, it's, whether it's social, uh, I'll turn on the TV now. I actually saw an Away commercial this morning, um, which I feel maybe that's a relatively newer thing that you're spending more money on, you know, mailers. How do you kind of, when you invest money, you know, in those different uh, channels, how has that evolved and are certain channels I guess more effective than others for you all yeah I think for us is that our channel mix continues to evolve and we continue to diversify which is basically to say um, we react to the way our customers respond to our assets and if they're not if something's not working then we quickly dial around to see like maybe is it the wrong messaging is it the wrong product and we like iterate so fast that we're able to consistently have actually all our channels performing on all cylinders. But I think for us is that brand is as involved in performance as performance is in brand. So when you see those TV assets and we're doing a lot of meaningful work to tell um, really like broader reach type narratives through TV, through out of home. Um, but we wanna make sure, like I'm, I'm responsible for performance mm -hmm. in a different way. For me, performance is brand love, it's brand consideration, it's awareness. And that really helps all the other channels perform too. So I guess that's to say it's, it's just one pie that we're continuously iterating and testing and learning and reacting to what our customers want. Sure. Um, so I want to pivot a little bit and get into category expansion. Yeah. I feel like that's a very hot topic. Um, obviously, there were job postings, you know, floating around. Away is looking for a head of apparel, and everybody's like, "What? Away's getting into apparel?" Um, so I, obviously, you know, you start with luggage, and I, you said, you know, you never just intended to only be a luggage company. But as a brand, do you hit a point, you know, where you you sell so much luggage? I don't know. You hit a wall where you realize, okay, we need to pivot it and I don't know grow and expand into these new categories or do you feel like as a company I don't know if you had this timeline set in stone from day one by like oh year three year four like we're gonna branch into this or is that just you know it evolves as it does yeah I think I you know I think from the very beginning we want it we're a travel brand and not a luggage brand so I think setting our sights on what is the full travel lifestyle that can, Away can have a point of view on, that Away can truly transform, mm -hmm. has been on strategy since the very beginning. Um, and our luggage business is continuing to grow and thrive. I think for us, it's, you know, the luggage has been able to transform travel in so many ways. It's been able to, it enables confidence. It's that, like, who would have thought two people would be nodding to one another in an airport because <laughs> they have the same luggage. Like, right. it's just, yeah. you know, like yeah. all those things, um, even from a functionality perspective and then from a design perspective, it just, it, it feels like an extension and an expression of, mm -hmm. it, you know, your point of view as um, it is in the style that you have. So for us, it's how do we take those principles and apply them to other categories that similarly lack that element of transformation mm -hmm. um, and lack that utility in the travel space. So, you know, for things like apparel, um, it's, it's like what is in market and what can we truly improve upon to make it just an exceptional customer experience. Sure. So it's not just the bag that you have that is a way, but it's really everything that goes inside, what you take with you, what you use after. Any, when you think of a way apparel, give us a sense of what that might look like. Well, I can't give away <laughs> too much. Yeah. But, um, but at a high fair. level, it shares all the core, you know, values of our luggage, which is being extremely thoughtfully designed. So whether you think about, um, you know, pockets or certain types of materials and the way that everything feels like truly made for what you need and not like all these extra bells and whistles. Sure. It's, it's really like it's edited in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and then is also really designed forward in terms of it's like something you want to be seen with. Yeah. Um, and I would say there's an element of versatility, like you can, you know, from the plane to a meeting, from the plane out to dinner, it's going to have all those components in it. I would just say it won't be um, what people expect. It, I would say it's not athleisure the okay. way that... Uh, Will we like match think. our suitcases though? Will there be some overlap? I mean, that's there? ultimate I don't know. travel it's uniform. Like just a whole, yeah. yeah, the whole uniform, yeah. Very branded on yeah, brand, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so, and then CPG as well. That's another category. Fair to say you're exploring that space in addition to apparel. But again, just I items I would assume that you know you would be using as part of your travel 
that yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it, again, the same principles of being thoughtful and being the things that you need and not what you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you look in, in the CPG and wellness space, they make, we see products that are sized to travel, but not necessarily made for travel, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So like, again, it's our point of view is like, what are we, tr what's the white space and what are we really improving upon? What's at market? Okay, yeah. Um, so now I wanna ask you about kind of your real estate strategy. Um, Cause I feel like a way, when I look at a lot of the other D2C brands, you've seen some, you know, right out of the gate, open stores, open stores and just grow really rapidly. Whereas I feel like you all have been very meticulous and kind of slow in your approach. You've done some pop-ups and in New York, you just have that one store um, in kind of the Nolita area. But now, like you said, when this funding was announced earlier this year, you came out and said, we're gonna do 50 over the next three years. And it feels a little bit aggressive to me, but like as a company, like I guess what gives you the ability to say, like you see that opportunity and you think that that's feasible and you know, these stores can be profitable? Yeah, I think um, retail has been amazing for us. So. Mm -hmm. Um, back in, I think, 2016, we had a pop-up and it was a hypothesis in terms of, you know, d do people want to come shop for luggage and for travel in the same way that they, you know, would shop for other items and what does this really look like for us? And, you know, at the end of the day, retail is the ultimate expression of experiential for the brand as well and how do we let people live in our brand world? And that pop-up was so successful that we did open seven stores, so six here in the US and one in London. And all of those stores, um, if anyone's ever been in one, they're very, um, that, you know, they're beautiful and thoughtful. They, you know, there's mirrors, for example, like you see yourself with the luggage, you yeah. get to try it out, you get to, um, you know, kind of experience packing for yourself. And then with all these third party um, items that help you really curate your travel experience and you really get to experience our brand. Right. Um, we host events in store, um, we drive community into our store. Like there's a lot of different things that the store does for us and they're also very successful. Um, and they drive off, they kind of, they drive online sales too. We see web traffic increases around our stores. Mm -hmm. So with that, we've been really thoughtful to take, okay, here are the seven stores. Here's the data that we're seeing. Here's what people are really resonating with. Mm -hmm. um, and then we wanted to use that to fuel what our strategy would look like in the future. So I would say it's less about us being, you know, we've just been really thoughtful and we've just been really making sure that we have that data to fuel the expansion and, and we listen to our yeah. community along the way. The 50 will be, that's US and international. Yeah, it'll be a on a global scale. Yeah. So, so speaking of international, cause I know you've got a new, you know, head of international kind of running that business. Um, do you, what opportunity do you, do you see there and how does that compare to just the growth that you've seen in, this, in the US? Yeah, I think it's, it's super interesting cause I almost feel like as a, you know, as a travel brand, mm -hmm. we have a we have it's, a duty yeah. to be global. Yeah. Like if if, if a customer um, you know wants to come into a store in in a foreign market, they need to be able to find us because we need to be able to provide that same customer experience that we could provide here. And so for us, I think it's fundamental to our brand strategy, fundamental to our company strategy that we have a global footprint. Mm -hmm. um, but it also means that we need to, you know, what's that white space in every market? And I think what we're seeing is that the role for a way for our products and the brand um, is just as relevant in globally as it has been here in the US. And we're seeing a ton of traction already around our store in London and in other places that we've activated. So I would just say it's more to come. What, one question, why yeah. not do stores in airports? Cause that feels like such a no brainer to me. Like, I, I've just always wondered. <laughs> oh, it's interesting, because I've yeah. had a lot of thoughts about this, uh, too. No, sure. <laughs> is it hard to do? Like, is it, I, I don't it's know. It's not hard to do, but I think if you think about it, a lot of people are already traveling with their bags, so the process is actually to uh, to swap out what they came with. Yeah. Um, but I have ideas on how we could yeah. do that in a really on, work. really yeah. on-brand way. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, at least what we see in the footprint of, um, you know, retail, in airports specifically in our category is that it doesn't feel elevated and merchandised in the way that we would want to support for our brand. And those brands have tons of brand awareness, but not a ton of brand love. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's we want to build love and then we'll continue to expand. Sure. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And now in terms of your um, 
wholesale partnerships, which I know you've been very limited there. Nordstrom is one that comes to mind. I know you did like a little bit of a pop in is what they call it, um, where you sold some stuff there for a while. Um, stay away from Amazon though, or so far you have, uh, but what has that looked like? Just how do you think of wholesale partners helping you build your business, obviously as a primarily direct to consumer brand? Yeah, I think, you know, as you mentioned, we've been super limited with wholesale partners. I think for us being direct to consumer is, is, um, it's our, it's our company, it's our business model, but it's also our brand strategy. It's what enables a one-to-one connection with our customers at all time, real time feedback loops, the data that fuels our business, um, is so essential when we have worked with wholesale. It really has been almost treated as a, mar- it's a marketing partnership. We see there's so much value in terms of what we can offer them for their customers mm-hmm. and how they can help us expand our own awareness. So mm-hmm. it's been really thoughtful and, and Nordstrom's been an amazing partner to Could us. you see extending that to a more full-time permanent deal or it's just more of a temporary test? Yeah, I learn? think it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be much smaller um, yeah. than full-time, yeah. Could, could we, I mean, could we expect other partnerships like that down the road? You think you'll continue to experiment with that? Yeah, I think with the right partners in the right markets where we think it makes sense and where we feel like um, there's mutual benefit um, and that it feels like it's, yeah, it continues to elevate our brand. Sure. So as you, obviously, as you continue to grow, you're going to be taking market share from different players in this space, one would imagine, but um, kind of looking at where the competition stacks up because you have like a Ramoa that's maybe more on the high end. Um, There's Toomey, obviously, is a brand that's been around for so long. And um, so many copycats have probably since come into the space. I'm sure you've seen since you all have started to grow. So where do you feel that you fit into this spectrum, I guess, so to speak? And how much space is there, I guess, in this industry for different players? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I just, with Away, when we launched, it feels in many ways that we woke up a very sleepy segment Mm -hmm. and that was super intentional. Um, And so now I think we feel that a lot of, you know, the comp, what's perceived as our competition, Mm -hmm. um, that we're mutually getting people just to care more about what they travel with and more about travel more broadly. And for us, that's like a huge benefit to the entire industry. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, there are some copycats that are trying things, but um, we don't pay attention to that too much. I think for us, it's what really continues to set us apart is what we built the relationship with our community. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we're the brand that's able to have a one-on-one dialogue, whether that is at retail or whether that is through our customer experience, whether it's on social. Um, We ask our customers questions all the time and they tell us what, you know, what they're looking for, what they like, and we're iterating. And I think you know, as much as there's other products in the space, um, brand is what sets us apart and what we're building with our community. And so um, we feel like there's a lot of room there. Sure. And I think with part of that community building, at least from following you on Instagram or whatnot, you have like an influencer, pretty yeah. strong influencer base as well. How has that worked or how do you, you know, how important, I guess, is it to have those influencers? Like I know Carly Kloss had her, you know, special edition set at one point. Um, so, you know, how important, I guess, is that to you as a brand to help you grow? Yeah, I mean, influencers have been core to our strategy from the very beginning. It's been a way for us to grow awareness um, through ways that don't involve media and the PR and influencers have really come hand in hand for us since the very beginning of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and influencers have helped us um, through building context and storytelling around our product. Um, the kind of like photography and the way that uh, influencers use our product has given um, value and utility to our own customers so much so that we see the UGC we generate from non-influencers looks just like our influencer content. And for us, um, our social feeds are 85% UGC and some of it's influencers and some of it is our customers. So for us, it's all part of one strategy. Influencers help us grow our reach and our awareness. Sure. So as we look toward 
the future, I guess, you know, maybe on a five to 10 year horizon for away. And obviously with a lot of these big milestones, like I mentioned happening this year, what would you say, there are so many things happening. I don't know if you could pin down one of these uh, in particular that you feel like the company is just most focused on in terms of growth ahead, or is it just really, <laughs> it's a mix. <laughs> yeah, I would say stuff. we're we're super focused on all three of those pillars. So um, retail expansion, product expansion, and international expansion. I think for us is they all work in concert. Mm -hmm. So if we do one really successfully, um, that's great. But for us, they all actually have to work together in order to realize the potential of what we're trying to build as a brand. Sure. So we're working yeah. on all of them. We're working on um, continuing to kind of elevate our brand storytelling, to elevate our community building, um, the way we provide our customer experience online and offline. So we're focusing on all of it. If you have to think about obstacles and maybe some of these like you've encountered even I know you've been there for about a year and a half uh, with the company um, you know biggest challenges that you feel like lie ahead maybe just in general and operating kind of in this D2C space today yeah I think for us is um, you know the landscape is always changing as you think about media um, competitors even kind of customer value sets um, are, are always evolving and I think for us is you know, as a marketer, um, for me, it's important to be on top of all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just making sure that we're, um, we're leading that change and not following it. And that's, that's the thing I think about quite a bit. Sure. Going back to the um, Amazon point, because yeah. we could dig in more there. Why do you feel like as a brand, you've stayed away from that? As I'm sure it's, you know, obviously a logical decision on your part, but um, you see other D2C companies or D2C brands in this space decide to go that route and, you know, they say it's super valuable. So just from where you sit, why have you chosen not to? Yeah, I mean, there are a ton of reasons why not. I think for us, it's it, it, speaking from the brand lens is you lose brand control when you start moving to um, places like Amazon. And we believe brand generates uh, company value. Mm -hmm. So if um, other businesses, you know, believe that when you go to Amazon is definitely a fast way to generate a ton of value, mm -hmm. but you lose part of that brand value. Mm -hmm. And for us, we'd want to generate that through our brand and not through mass distribution. Yeah, fair. But I mean, but is it totally counted out of like this will never happen or more never say never? <laughs> I, mean, I will likely not be there. If that <laughs> yes. No, I hear you. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it's, you know, like we were going back to copycats and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see a lot of that no matter what. So yeah. um, as, as you look at the industry that you're in, are there other uh, direct to consumer companies that you kind of look toward as inspiration in a way, companies that have been around and that you think that you can, you know, build off of some of their strengths? Um, I, we look at we look at the direct to consumer businesses quite a bit, just in terms of finding like novel ways to use channels and um, providing customer experience. But our sites are set on becoming a global iconic travel brand, and so I would say we spend a lot more time talking about Nike and about Apple and about Lululemon mm -hmm. than we do about other direct to consumer businesses. Um, sure. Just you know, in terms of wanting to build that that using them as kind of North Stars in terms of what we're trying to model mm. our brand behaviors after. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely important. I think you just need to, you got to be on top of all things at all times. Yes. Well, so if you're thinking Nike, Lulu, then maybe there's an IPO at one point down the road, or is that like way out into the future? I can't what, speak to that, but can't comment. Not your yeah. not your day job, no. I guess. So, yeah. no. Well, what what do you your prior experience? You were obviously at Anheuser Busch. Yeah. Um, we were talking about that backstage. What do you think that you were able to take from that into this new job here, and just a value add from that? Yeah, I think um, you know CPG businesses do an incredible job at customer insights and with brand storytelling. Um, like very elevated creative, right placements, right time to the right customer. And I think for us, I've been able to leverage a ton of that mm -hmm. um, in terms of how do we start to operate and behave like a global brand mm -hmm. um, and kind of move into the next phase of our growth. So I've been using a lot of that. Do you feel as you look at peers in the industry, others that have the same job as you, um, do you feel like they're still like, you know, how does the competition stack up, I guess, or do you feel like the expertise is there with a lot of these D2C companies on yeah. the marketing side, or do you feel like everybody's still kind of learning as they go? 
mean, I think there's a sense that everyone's learning as they go, and honestly, like the landscape keeps changing, so you need to you need to learn and adapt as you go. Sure. But I think what is unique about Away is the emphasis on brand. We're a brand-led company, which means that our brand strategy um, is what drives strategy across the whole business and that everybody's in service of our brand and our customer, whether they sit on the brand team or not. Mm -hmm. And so I think that to me is something that I find pretty um, novel yeah. when speaking to my peers sure. and something that I think will continue to set us apart and is what will get us to, to Nike and to Apple. Yeah. Well, I know we're almost out of time, but last, last question, if you could offer maybe one bit of advice kind of generic to anyone in the audience that kind of serves in a you know, brand marketing role, yeah. what might it be in today's day and age Ooh, in retail? I know, um, to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think is to, this is something I think about a ton when I look at other businesses, which is to really differentiate between what branding is and what brand is. Mm -hmm. Branding is like beautiful, nice design system, nice logo, like you show up beautifully, great unboxing experience, but brand is driving love. And you can't just do that through a logo and through the way you look. Yeah. And I think making sure that um, you know, you're thinking about those two in concert uh, is super important. Yeah, because there are a lot of companies that I would argue only look at one versus yes. the other. So yes. anyways, well, thank you guys yeah, thank so you much guys. for coming. So appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.